So we all agree that our Spotify raps are going to be dominated by the Hasbun Hotel soundtrack, right? I don't know what the hell they put into these songs, but they slap. And most of them have been trapped in my brain cage for weeks. They do what any musical number should do and drive the plot forward and endear you to the characters. Not to mention the over-the-top choreography with the beautiful animation. I just, I, I am alarmed with how visually and musically captivating this entire show is. Like what the actual fuck. If you didn't see it, I talked about Hasbun Hotel and my uh, opinions on it, both the positive and the negative. If you haven't seen that, it's, you know, it's there for you to check out if you want to. I don't know, I don't run your life. But today specifically, we are going to go through my personal ranking of the Hasbun Hotel soundtrack from worst to best. I shouldn't need to specify this, but you know, this is all subjective. If I don't adore one of your favorites, please don't take it personally. Or do, so long as you drive engagement, I guess. I can't control you. Like and subscribe. But before we begin, ciao. My name's Thomas, aka the Unicorn of War, and I make video essays and reviews about the media that I enjoy, from Hasbun Hotel, to Winx Club, to Avatar, to, to many, many, many things. Here's a, here's a list of the things I have in store uh, soon. I dig into the elements of a piece of media that resonate with me, which ones don't, and I talk about why I think that is at length. If all of that sounds dope to you, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell for notifications because YouTube hates creators. Also, please consider pledging your support to myself and the channel over on Patreon for extra rewards such as access to the private Union of War Discord server, early access videos and scripts, and Patreon-exclusive content. Now, without further ado, let the chaos commence. Welcome to heaven. Yeah, this is the one song I always forget exists. It's not bad by any means, but it feels very arbitrary, obligatory. Like, obviously we're gonna have a song to introduce us to heaven given how important it is narratively, but nothing about it really grips me. And the more that I think about it, maybe it's because it's about heaven. The songs that I tend to love usually are more about character conflicts or relationships, but this one is basically just about introducing us to a realm, so it doesn't feel very character-driven. As a result, it feels very dry and forgettable when all is said and done. Though I will say, I do like the subtle touches here with Emily being genuinely excited to show Charlie and Vaggie around, contrasted with Sarah subtly going, <laughs> Remember, you can't stay here, you filthy fucking hellspawn. Fuck Sarah, she gets no rights. Now this, <laughs> this one I might be killed for. Look, it's adorable and lovely, and I am here for the sapphics getting their cute little moment. Erica and Stephanie's voices are beautiful, and they pair together perfectly. And personally, I am a fan that Vaggie has the deeper speaking voice, but the higher singing voice, it's everything, 11 out of 10. But the song is also so short that I can't really help but have it be placed here. It's not bad at all, but the other songs just do too much to fall below this one. And I do get why the visuals are so simple. It's meant to be an understated, intimate moment between Charlie and Vaggie. So the usual over-the-top choreography would probably just kill that vibe. But ultimately, I must follow my heart, and my heart says that despite how sweet this is, it's a must to go here. I hope my heart doesn't get me doxxed. This was a song that I was extremely excited for when I heard it in the trailer. Well, actually, I didn't really watch the trailer before the show dropped. It's more that I actually went back to the trailer, you know, before the final episodes dropped, because I was like, I must see what crumbs of the finale they put in the trailer. And then that song took over my life for like a week or less than a week. I'm not sure. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the song didn't really live up to my expectations. Oops. The parts of the song that I love are the choruses, where Charlie and the cannibals are asserting that they're going to stand their ground against the exorcists. The melody is what really hooks me. And although I kind of feel unsteady, now I need to be ready for this. Where the song kind of loses me is, uh, the verses. They're not bad, but they sound so silly melodically and lyrically that they clash against the choruses, and not in a complimentary way, in a, wow, this feels like two separate songs just haphazardly stitched together kind of way. Like, yes, we're trying to get the cannibals on our side, and it is kind of funny that we have to emphasize them being able to eat angel wings to get them on our side, but 
I was kind of hoping for something more emotional in this number rather than comedy. I was expecting this to be the ready as I'll ever be moment of the show, and it, it, it's not. It's really not. And maybe that one is on me for not appreciating the song as it is. And I will say the verses have definitely grown on me, but I still don't quite love it enough to rank it any higher. It starts with sorry. Now, this one has definitely grown on me. It serves as the beginning of Serpentious' little redemption arc, and I love that for him. The melody is sweet, almost feeling like a lullaby, which works perfectly for Charlie reaching out to give Pentius a second chance, and also contrasts hilariously with Vaggy and Angel feeling just a tad homicidal. Can't we just kill him? Visually, huge fan of the little pink cloud that Charlie walks on, and the clouds later on visualizing Pentius' sins, blown up by sorry fireworks. It's a bit more visually understated than some of the other songs, but that tracks given this is meant to be a more low-key, sincere moment. And generally, I am a huge fan of the fact that major character beats and plot points like this one are portrayed via song. It really drives home that Pentius is genuinely on the path to redemption, and that Charlie means it when she says that she wants to help sinners atone. And yes, Pentius' voice makes it a bit... silly. <laughs> Forgive a dirtbag like me. But I appreciate the fact that he stays in character. I mean, it's meant to be the characters themselves singing to us to tell us the story, and as such, the music is inseparable from the show itself. That's kind of how it should be when you make a musical, at least in my book. Plus, the silliness adds to the moment's levity, so, hell yeah. <laughs> I must say, I've really come to appreciate the paralleling of Vaggy and Carmilla. Both want to protect what they hold dear, but are taking incredibly different approaches to do so. Not to mention, their voices are perfectly complementary. I'm definitely more a fan of the Vaggy part of the song, since I care more about her as a character, but I do enjoy Carmilla's part at least musically. In terms of visuals, Vaggy's half is far more interesting given that she's climbing the hotel, leaping off the roof, and leaning off the top of the pirate ship to sing madly to the sky, looking across the city of hell and also up to heaven, her former home high in the maroon sky. But Carmilla, well, hers is more understated, with her just looking out the window and holding her daughters. It's another case where it seems the more intimate, emotionally heartfelt songs try to be more low-key and less bombastic, but I feel like Carmilla's half just needed something more. Because while Vaggy's visuals feel low-key yet captivating, Carmilla's visuals just feel very bland. We'll say though, the silhouette of Vaggy's sharper, more angular hair flowing in the wind with the ribbons it's everything, bitch. I don't know, more carriages need to sing from the tops of pirate ships as the flowy bits of their designs sway in the breeze, I guess. And then tomorrow it will be a fucking happy day. As the ending number of the season, I absolutely love that this song low-key reprises Happy Day in Hell. It starts out somber with Charlie in shock over Pentius' death and the hotel's destruction, only for the music to grow brighter as Lucifer and her friends remind her of all the good that she has done. We love effectively communicating the story through song. Everyone else now sharing Charlie's optimism really warms my heart, with the characters enthusiastically rebuilding the hotel bigger and better than ever. It seems that this song is less about the characters reflecting on the season and more about their excitement and anticipation towards a new beginning. <laughs> that also goes for the V's and Alistair, which makes sense given season one really felt like it was more about establishing everything than anything else. My personal favorite part of the song is the final chorus, where we really commit to the happy day in hell reprise. I'm just a sucker for all the characters coming together to go, yeah, we lived, bitch, and we're gonna crush tomorrow. Patient. <laughs> I'm gonna make you wish that you'd stayed gone. It feels like this is the one that everybody else loves, but, uh, I'm kind of meh on. I mean, I adore the visuals, and I very much enjoy this messy conflict between Vox and Alistair, 
but because Vox himself isn't all that important in season one, it leads me to kind of dismiss the importance of this number compared to the others. The reason why it's here on the list, though, is because of the visuals. The way that they communicate Vox's power through television and broadcast, as well as how deeply insecure he is about people paying even a little attention to Alistair, is high key what makes this song so fun. Really, I only love the song when Alistair joins in because this strawberry pimp learning the phrase, that's the tea, gives me so much life and revitalizes my will to live. Well, it's a happy day in hell. Hi, mister. Go fuck yourself. Now, this is Charlie's Disney princess number. It explains her goal of convincing heaven that redeeming sinners is possible while endearing you to her character and giving you a better idea of the realm she's trying to help. In terms of story, this song is doing a lot more than it may appear at first glance. Eat your heart out, this wish, and also welcome to Rosas, you could never, <laughs> you could never. Charlie's warmth is infectious. She genuinely loves her realm and its people, even as they swear at her or casually die horrifically behind her. Girl, you see the corpse, right? You see that? Oh my God, oh my God, Charlie, be careful, sweetie. And you know what? I salute that. That's really what sells Charlie as a great protagonist to me. I also love Vaggy singing all the way from the hotel as Charlie looks up at it. The visuals, I did, yes, chef's kiss, but also contrasting Charlie's ignorant optimism with Vaggy's jaded cynicism. Cause you know, Vaggy knows that the angels suck and that especially the exorcists are bloodthirsty monsters, whereas Charlie is still taking them in good faith. At first, if you're not listening closely, you might think Vaggy's calling the people of hell bloodthirsty and deranged. But nah, she's talking about the angels, motherfucker. And yeah, she's correct, they suck. Fuck you, Adam. You could almost call me Dad. Okay, we must all admit, we are all trash for how much Lucifer and Alistair fucking hate each other. Well, it's not very clever. <laughs> It's not really enemies to lovers, given, you know, Alistair is an Arrow Ace icon, but the way that these two continually cannot fucking stand each other and drive each other mad always guarantees a good time for the audience. This song is the encapsulation of that. Alistair tries to pitch himself as a father figure to Charlie solely to troll Lucifer, and Lucifer's response is, fuck you, you strawberry pimp, behold my golden violin. <laughs> I love how over the top all the visuals are. Lucifer cooking Alistair and then serving up his severed fucking head. All the opulent imagery with slot machines and fountains brandishing Lucifer's face that Lucifer offers up. And the colors? Bitch, the animators went hard on this. The part where the song loses me is, uh, Mimsy. It's me. Yes, it's me. Yeah, I, I don't like Mimsy. I, I get it, y'all. Y'all hardcore fans probably knew who she was already, but I should not have to do wiki-level research to know who the fuck someone in this show is. Mimsy's introduction just completely kills the song's momentum, and yeah, maybe that's the point, but sometimes points are bad, like this one. But before Mimsy shows up, the song is top tier. Yes, excellent, wonderful, chef's kiss. Out for This is where the Vaggy and Carmilla parallel comes full circle. However, this one, strangely, is not a duet, with Carmilla doing all the singing, which I am sad about. I wish this got to be a duet, but for what it's worth, I am still a huge fan of both Carmilla's voice and the abundance of Spanish guitar, fuck yes. And the message of the song is one that I'm very much on board with. That you're fighting for the people that you love, defending them to the last breath, no matter what. Even the line, protect them and be out, feels like it's telling you not to indulge in carnage and cruelty, to just do what you need and then be done. What really places the song here though is how fucking catchy it is. This feels like it could be a proper pop song divorced from the context of the show, especially since any ordinary person who doesn't know about Has Been could probably just hear Carmilla's voice and think she's just an ordinary singer rather than a character. More than anything. Jeremy Jordan has the voice of an angel. I swear I didn't intend that to be a pun while I was writing it. But hearing his ballad as Lucifer confesses his pain after what heaven did to him and his fear that Charlie will meet the same fate, 
really fucking gets me. These two's voices go together seamlessly, and the visuals with them flying together through what appears to be a red and gold ethereal circus tent is just is so fucking magical and beautiful. And the light coming through the broken windows and doors of the hotel on Charlie's side, giving her father hope, fuck yes. And who could forget baby Charlie being in awe of her father's visions. The fucking seraph swan or duck thing with six wings, just like Lucifer, only for a faceless Lilith to take Charlie away. Fuck you, Lilith. <laughs> Heartbreaking, but immaculate. Both musical, and visual storytelling, we'd love to see it. It's an estranged father and daughter finally getting on the same page, communicating their feelings with each other, and it's so sweet. It is so nice to see this kind of relationship in media where a parental relationship doesn't have to be fully discarded, but instead can be salvaged. Yeah, I know it's poison, you're feeding me poison. Admittedly, this is one I'm not as fond of, mostly because it had to share an episode with Loser Baby, and solely because of that, Poison kind of fell off my radar. But it's still a great number, communicating the dire straits Angel found himself in, communicating the dire straits Angel finds himself in while under contract by Valentino. It's a tragic song where Angel fully knows that he's in a terrible situation, but can't really do much as his soul is literally owned by Val. He can't help but continue to drink the poison offered by his tormentor. And in the end, he's come to view himself as a poison, as Val has broken down his self-esteem and sense of self. It's arguably the darkest, saddest song on the soundtrack, masked by pop melodies, great vocals, and stellar visuals. The visuals themselves really communicate just how undesirable Angel's situation is and really make you feel for him. And it can be a difficult watch as a result, I'd imagine especially for those who've been in toxic or abusive relationships. And for that reason, in getting the audience to empathize with Angel's situation and not pulling any punches, it kind of just belongs in the top five for me. Hell is forever whether you like it or not. Oh my god. This is one of the best villain numbers I've ever fucking heard. It starts with Charlie trying to reprise Happy Day in Hell, but Adam ain't having it. Like, Girl, it's hell. You're not supposed to have happy days. It communicates Adam and the angels disdain for sinners and how hypocritical they are. They claim to be morally superior inherently, which is what allows them to do reprehensible things and not bat an eye. Because it's okay when they do the killing. It does a great job in capturing how these kinds of people really just don't believe in the virtues that they tout, but instead use them to bludgeon those they view as inferior. Also, huge fan of the visuals, with Charlie floating up to Heaven's Gates, the literal pot of sinner's blood and bones, all the clouds that Adam floats on as the sun burns behind him, almost as obnoxiously bright as his ego. 11 out of 10, I approve. Though I will say, I wish the soundtrack version removed Charlie's little comments while Adam sings. I get why they're present for the show version, but on the soundtrack, I kind of just want to hear Adam. Like, if you removed her quips, nothing about the song story would change, so yeah. I should not love this one as much as I do, but I cannot help it. I'm a sucker for Carmilla and Velvet's voices, especially Velvet's. Seeing Velvet flaunt her ego while challenging the overlords, all just to get a response out of Carmilla, now that is some quality conflict and pettiness. The visuals don't go as hard as they could, but I do live for Velvet walking along the table and getting in the Overlord's faces. I love the Spanish guitar coming into play when Carmilla starts singing, and I am obsessed with Velvet's wordplay. Out of all the songs on the list, this one has been the most stuck in my head. Though, I wish Alistair's little comment stayed in the soundtrack version. That was a productive meeting. Yes, yes, I know. I literally just complained about Charlie's quips staying in the soundtrack version of Hell is Forever. But Alistair's doesn't intrude upon Carmilla and Velvet singing, and it's deeply funny, to me at least. Strawberry Pimp writes, We're both losers, baby, we're losers. This one was probably the breakout hit of the show and most people's favorites. And for good reason. I am a huge fan of Husk meeting Angel where he is emotionally, commiserating with him rather than trying to force him to think positively about a situation that, yeah, it just sucks. It lets you own how your life is a train wreck with a smile on your face. And you know what? Given how on fire the world has been for the last few years, 
we all fucking need this, so bless. And shout out to Keith David for his angelic vocals. The contrast between Husk and Angel's voices is magnificent. I utterly adore these two's friendship. A lot of folks ship these two, and honestly, I'd be down for it. I wasn't expecting them to be as close as they are, but their connection is just so wholesome and precious. Not to mention, it really goes to show how friendship can help you to survive awful situations. So, yeah, th this one is S tier. I fucking adore it. But there's one that tops it for me. Uh, no, that that wasn't meant to be a pun either. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna roll with it, baby. But she was right, Sarah. Okay, when I say a song in a musical should advance the plot. This is what I mean. This is the blueprint. We have Emily pointing out how Angel has done all that's required to be redeemed, yet Sarah's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. The way the music gets more intense as Charlie stands her ground, belting desperately to get the heavenly chord on her side, it's not fair, Sarah. then shifting into the aggressive guitars of the Hell is Forever reprise with Adam and Lute, dehumanizing and condemning angel dust. Did you forget that hell is forever? I, ooh, ooh, the way I get heated. I get as heated as Charlie in this moment. But then using that to accidentally reveal the extermination to Emily and the other angels, Sarah tried to defend it as there is this bloodthirsty crazed look of hellfire in her eyes. Emily risking becoming fallen as she and Charlie read heaven for filth. When you just to kill them again. And the culmination in Vaggy being revealed as an angel and former exorcist? This is a chef's kiss. I often hear people complain about there being too much plot progression in these songs with the shifting melodies and the sheer number of characters involved. And I'm just sitting here like, wow, we've really lost the understanding of what music can do for a story, haven't we? Like, I adore this moment because it's done through a musical number. All these revelations wouldn't hit nearly as hard if they were just ordinary scenes. The music elevates every character beat and conflict going on in this room, transforming it all into a digestible, memorable moment that has quite literally burned itself into the lines of film between my brain's dendrites. This is everything that I want from anything claiming to be a musical. More plot events as musical numbers, please. Actually, no, not please. I'm demanding. So, yeah. There's my personal ranking of Has Been Hotel's soundtrack. What's your favorite song and why? How much do you want to murder me for dissing your personal favorite? How long do you think it'll take you to track me down and gut me? Share your ideas in the comments. Anyhow, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this from me, then be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because YouTube hates creators. And also please consider pledging your support for myself and the channel over on Patreon. I'm the Unicorn of War, Heaven is a Lie, and also a shit show.